Wrestling video games have been in the toilet for almost a decade now, and the WWE is looking for a new dance partner. But will it accept that less can be more? Good morning. Good Wednesday morning to you. I'm Shane Satterfield from Sifted, and this is Good Morning Gaming for March 9th, 2022. The show is in our patrons' feeds bright and early every weekday morning and free on our YouTube channel for everyone else. You can find our flagship show, Game Face, by searching your favorite podcast service, You'll find the podcast versions of the rest of our content in the same feed you found this. Back six years ago, WWE signed a contract with Take-Two to create video games based on the property until 2022. And funny, here we are in 2022. The last game published by Take-Two was terrible. WWE 2K20 was so bad that there was no WWE 2K21. So Take-Two decided to hand the franchise to a new developer in the form of visual concepts. And so far, with only a couple reviews in, it looks like the game is significantly better than the last one, but still not amazing. Enter EA. Several reports today have suggested that the WWE is now in talks with Electronic Arts to create wrestling video games going forward and possibly sign a new exclusive contract. Now, EA already works with the UFC license, so unifying combat sports under the EA banner might sound enticing to WWE. But to me, regardless of who ends up owning the license, one thing has to change with wrestling games. They need to become more simple. They need to be simplified. Talk to any wrestling fan who at least has a somewhat serious interest in video games and ask them, what is the best wrestling video game of all time? You're not going to find any answers that point to games from the last 15 to 20 years. You're just not. Wrestling video games are a subgenre that for whatever reason, has not improved as technology has improved. Sure, the games look better now than they ever have, but they play worse. Wrestling games have become so bloated. It almost felt like an arms race against no one because there, there was only one WWE game on the market. And while there used to be lots of other wrestling games back in the day, now there's really just one. And so it was competing with itself to become bloated. There are way too many modes in recent wrestling games. And not only that, the gameplay has become way too complicated. Again, ask that wrestling fan that you know who also likes video games what their favorite wrestling games were. Let them answer. And what they'll tell you is that they feel the best wrestling games of all time came out during the N64 era. And there was no shortage of amazing wrestling games during that entire time. There was WrestleMania 19. There was WWF Attitude. There was WWE SmackDown vs. Raw. There was WWE SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain. There was WCW NWO Revenge. WWF No Mercy. WWF WrestleMania 2000. All of those games are heralded as amazing wrestling games. And the reason people liked them is because you could learn how to play them in like five minutes. But at the same time, they did have some hidden depth that you could explore. So experts could become good at them. If you came to my house and you had not played WrestleMania 2000, you weren't going to beat me. You were going to have fun because you could figure out how to play it pretty quickly, but you had no chance of winning. Wrestling video games, for whatever reason, at a certain point decided that they just needed to become as complicated as possible. It, they completely lost sight of their audience. Most wrestling fans are not hardcore gamers. 
They're people who probably like video games and probably own a console, but they're not the guy who's speedrunning Elden Ring. So make the games for your audience, regardless of whether Take-Two ends up with the license or WWE changes and works with EA. I hope that both of them will look at this genre with a clear head, think about the audience, think about the people who will potentially buy these games and make the games for them. And now for a couple more stories from the top of your SIFs. All the recent data on game sales suggests that all of you are buying digital games instead of physical games. I have said on Good Morning Gaming before, I am a physical purchaser and I try to be an evangelist for physical games and I try to convince you guys to buy physical games. However, I do not think I'm gonna take credit for this recent number. Far Cry 6, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and Guardians of the Galaxy sold more physical copies than digital in the UK last year. In general, single player games sell better physically while multiplayer games generally sell better as a digital product. That makes sense. If you're gonna play a shooter all the time, you don't wanna have to keep going and getting a disc every time you wanna play a couple matches. The one exception from last year was Resident Evil Village, which was pretty much right at 50-50, but slightly more popular as a digital game. Over 47% of all games sold at physical retail last year in the UK were for Nintendo Switch. So for whatever reason, the people who own Switch are interested in game collecting while everyone else has kind of left it in the dust. A brand new Sony State of Play is premiering today at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We don't know a lot of information about what's going to be shown. However, Sony has hinted that it will focus, while not exclusively, but primarily on Japanese games. With that in mind, don't expect to get a look at games like God of War. However, maybe Final Fantasy 16. I would, well, that's, <laughs> I would put that at a very, very slim percentage of that being shown. More likely, we're probably gonna see some of the smaller games from Japan, maybe even some indie stuff like Stray. So don't get too excited, but state of plays are always fun. So make sure you point your browser to sifted.net at 2 p.m. Pacific, and we'll have it curated to the top of your sift. The Nintendo 64 offerings on Nintendo Switch Online are getting better by the day. When it first launched, there was a lot of consternation about how the emulation was working under the hood. People were not happy about it, but the last couple releases have improved drastically, and... That's a good thing, because one of the next games coming to Nintendo Switch Online is F-Zero X. This F-Zero game for the N64 is lightning fast, and it was one of the few N64 games that really focused on frame rate, and it made a big difference. Now, the game itself, off track, is really spartan. It's really just the cars and the track, and there are tons of cars in each race. That's what made it fun, but what made it competitive and addicting was its silky smooth frame rate. So it's good to see that N64 emulation on Nintendo Switch has improved just in time to do this great racing game some justice. It arrives on March 11th with the latest Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack. With all the talk about Grand Theft Auto 6 on Sifted lately with Michael Pachter's exclusive information, we're getting some surprising information about Grand Theft Auto 5 direct from Rockstar. GTA 5's new gen version is $10 cheaper on PlayStation 5 than Xbox Series X. Now, this looks to be some part of a side deal related to GTA Online being free on PlayStation Plus right now. It's probably some kind of side marketing deal, uh, but we'll take it. Now, if you're an Xbox Series X fan, you can't be too happy about this, but the upgrade's only $10. It's probably worth it. You're going to do it. <laughs> Dying Light 2 just recently released, but developer Techland hasn't forgotten the original. Dying Light 1 gets a next-gen update for PS5 today, and Xbox Series X is on the way. Not stopping there, Techland is also improving the game for the mid-cycle hardware refreshes from last gen, like the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. If you're on the fence about buying Dying Light 2, this should put all your fears to rest.
Let's take a break, and when we come back, we'll tackle today's boss fight. Welcome to today's boss fight, where I tackle random topics that may or may not be related to video games. When I set out to create Sifted, I wanted to create an oasis for people like me. And when I say me, what I mean is people who are a little older who still have a lot of passion for gaming. That's me. I think a lot of people will see me walking down the street, they would have no idea how much I love video games. Because honestly, there just aren't a lot of people my age who are like me. And how do I know this? Because I launched a website for people like me. <laughs> and I can look at the numbers and the amount of people who have checked out the site. Now, when you don't have a lot of money for marketing dollars to message the website, it has to be as overt as possible. And really... The best way to overtly advertise the type of people that you want to attract with your website is with moderation. If you join a website, you see people are getting booted for acting like jerks. You have a pretty good idea that the website that you're visiting runs a tight ship. And if you're the type of person who is over internet foolishness like I am, then that's probably a good sign. Another way to check is with their terms of service. And you should read our terms of service because they are very specific. And unlike really any other terms of service out there. So we had our initial launch and the messaging got through. Most of the people who came and checked out the site in the first year mentioned that the reason they came was because they heard it was a website for older players, mature players who weren't flaming each other. They heard that there was intelligent discussion on the site, etc., etc. So here we are over a half decade later running the site and... The numbers at this point are borne out, and it's hard <laughs> to attract adults to a gaming website, even if it's built just for them. Now, you may be asking, how else did we create Sifted for older folks? Well, the nature of the site itself is made for older folks. Look, you young whippersnappers, you have no problem going on Twitter and scrolling past just... <laughs> Tons and tons and tons and tons of trash that you don't care about until you get to that one thing that you like. I don't have time for that. I'm busy. I'm really busy. I don't have time to turn around. I'm running a business. I'm married. I don't even have kids. Imagine someone who has kids. How do they have time for Twitter? I, I don't have time for Twitter. I don't need Twitter because I use Sifted. And I go to Twitter now and it seems redundant and late. So that's how I built the site. I'm like, these people, these older players, they have careers, they have wives, they have kids, they have all this other stuff going on, they have kids in sports or whatever. They don't have time to spend on social media or hunting around YouTube for the stuff that they really care about and they want to keep abreast of. And that's why Sifted was created. You come to the website, you tell us what you like in a fun interface, and then we give you a custom feed of content based on our algorithm. It works. You can come to Sifted after you set up your Sift ratings and at a glance, within five seconds, you will know all the gaming news that matters to you. What you care about. But what I've discovered is that most adults who are really passionate about games, they don't even have that amount of time to check stuff out. And so, well, I wouldn't say that the site's design or the site's idea has been a failure because we do have an awesome community full of great people, all of which are pretty much adults. Certainly, all of which are over 25 years old for the most part. And that's what I really consider being an adult. I know a lot of people consider 18. To me, I, I would skew that a little older. Speaking for myself, when I was 18 to 24, I was not an adult. I may have thought I was, but I was not. So... It's worked in that the messaging got through, the terms of service got through, and the functionality of the site got through, and we have attracted an older audience of players who are just as passionate about gaming 
as any 17 year old, maybe more so because the people on our site like everything instead of just one game, like a Fortnite or a Call of Duty or a Rocket League or whatever. But we have failed to attract that audience in large numbers. And why? What have we done wrong? Where did we misstep? What does the older player want when they head online? If they want to learn about one of their favorite hobbies, what are they looking for? I don't know that they're looking at all. <laughs> I feel like a lot of older players use social media to keep in touch with family and friends. And generally that's Facebook. I know maybe people listen to this and be like, Facebook, that's for old people. But it is, and most adults use Facebook more than they use anything else. They may check Twitter once or twice a day, but they post on Facebook more than they post anywhere else. And for them, I think the way they look at it is whatever happens to bubble up and just appear in their Facebook feed is probably the stuff that's big enough for them to care about. How did I miss this? I don't know, because I basically patterned, sifted after what I wanted from a gaming website and what I wasn't getting from social media. I think also, as you get older, you have more disposable income. You don't have to be quite as picky with the games that you buy. You can take a risk here or there without relying on Shane Satterfield to tell you whether to buy it or not, or Matt Kyle to tell you whether to buy it or not. I think for a lot of adult players, a general presence on social media is simply good enough. Now, I would argue that it's not good enough and time is money. And sure, you may be able to afford buying a crappy game or a game that doesn't really resonate with you. But are you ever getting the time back that you spend with that game? Nope. The other thing you realize as you get older is time really is money. When I was young and older people used to say that to me, I'd be like, whatever. I got time to kill all day, every day. When you get older, you do not. Not only do you not have the time, you're very picky with how you spend it because you do realize eventually time is money. And I knew this when I launched Sifted and apparently <laughs> it doesn't cost enough money. <laughs> But anyway, I'm interested to hear in the comments what you look for or would look for from a gaming website. And I realize some of you may be at the point where you're just never going to go to a gaming website. It's just not something that you would consider doing. I know a lot of you guys spend your time on YouTube looking at game stuff. I highly recommend heading to Sifted. We do a really good job of skimming all the good stuff off YouTube. And if you're tired of the comments here, I know I am. God bless YouTube. It's an amazing service, and I appreciate everything that it does to help my business. But the community here is just awful. So first of all, if you are looking for an adult gaming community, someplace where you feel like you can connect, you feel like a fish out of water because you're my age and you love games just as much as you did when you were 15 or 16, we have a home for you. It's sifted.net. And if you're not into heading over and checking out the site, or maybe you have and you just didn't like it, let me know what it was about the site that didn't work for you, or just let me know what kept you from sticking to the website. Thanks for listening to Good Morning Gaming. I appreciate every single one of you who listens to GMG. I'm Shane Satterfield, and you can do what the cool kids do and follow me on Twitter at Dinfire. And while you're there, follow Sifted at Sifted Games. While you're on the interwebs, head to patreon.com slash sifted and drop us a pledge. We'll be back with another episode tomorrow, but until then, make sure you seize today, because there will never be another.